radiologists are indispensable to the operation of our medical system, but who are they and what do they actually do? Dr. David Ranson is a forensic pathologist for the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine. Forensic pathology is the uh, work that's done um, to provide pathological science and medical pathology uh, information to the courts. I carried out an autopsy. Now that includes helping police, it includes helping coroners, it includes helping the criminal courts and sometimes the civil courts in resolving critical medical issues, largely based around um, individuals who've died. Forensic pathology is not really like CSI. Um, TV shows that deal with forensic medical issues or forensic science issues usually um, have to condense what's really done for an audience in an hour or so. And so what happens is they have one actor who will actually be doing the work of the forensic pathologist and the forensic ballistic expert and a bit of forensic toxicology, whereas in the real world these are separate people. So forensic pathologists, I focus on the autopsy itself I focus on the examination of the deceased person and I focus on trying to find out what the cause of death is and what that death cause means for the community. I think it's very important to realise that forensic pathologists don't just work with the dead. In particular, they work with the living, the families and the loved ones of those who've died. Many families actually want to meet the person who last had physical contact with their loved one. I think when we deal with mass disasters, it's very important that individuals are identified so that the community knows who is missing and know that they have been found. And appropriate and decent um, uh, funeral arrangements can be made. The nature and the pattern of the injury, the vast majority of the work we do is looking for patterns and trends in causes of death to enable us to identify hazards in the community um, that can be prevented in the future. We provide that information to a coroner and the coroner can then evaluate that death together with other deaths and come to perhaps recommendations that might be put in place to prevent such deaths in the future. You could say that today Part of the role of a forensic pathologist is to be a public health specialist. After leaving high school, Dr Ranson spent the next six years at medical school. He then did an internship, followed by six years postgraduate study to obtain a fellowship in anatomical pathology, specialising in forensic pathology, and then completed a law degree. Whilst forensic pathology largely works with the very traditional investigation process of the autopsy, modern technologies are increasingly being used. Currently, um, every person admitted to the mortuary um, at, in Victoria has a whole body CT scan. And this provides us with an enormous range of information which allows us to assess what is going on in an individual without opening the body at an autopsy. Then we can go to the coroner, explain our medical findings, and the coroner can then make an informed decision as to whether an autopsy is necessary in that particular case. I think being able to get to grips with what has really gone on, to solve the puzzle, to explain why someone has died medically, to integrate the findings at the death scene with the findings at autopsy, and explain something that has not been explicable to other people is a tremendous challenge and very enjoyable. And while Dr Ranson is a forensic pathologist, pathologists in general play a much wider role than just determining the cause of death. They are actively involved in diagnosing 70% of disease and work across a range of different specialities. These include anatomical pathology, the study of disease through tissue, chemical pathology, which deals with the entire range of disease and encompasses detecting changes in a number of substances in blood and body fluids, such as electrolytes, enzymes and proteins. Genetics, which looks at chromosomes and DNA from cells to diagnose genetic diseases. Hematology, which deals with diseases which affect the blood, such as anemia, leukemia, lymphoma and clotting or bleeding disorders. 
immunopathology, which looks at allergic reactions, autoimmune disorders such as diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis and thyroid conditions. Microbiology, which deals with diseases caused by infectious agents such as bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites and general pathology, which covers the profession as a whole. I think the work of forensic pathology is incredibly satisfying. We get to solve problems, we get to solve puzzles, and we get to prepare information and to deliver it into really quite unusual environments, such as the courts, um, such as working with police teams, such as working in forensic science teams, and very importantly, working with families to help them understand what happened when their loved one died.